now um, we will move over to my colleague, Christine Erian. Uh, she is with the College of Continuing Education. So how, how many Hornets in the house do we have? How many alum? Yeah, wow, okay, stingers up. It's our new president, <laughs> it's all about stingers up. Thank you, yeah, Hornets in the house, thank you. Okay, one in 20 people in the region are a grad of Sac State, so we are a workforce powerhouse, uh, at least we think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I say we're the workforce for the state of California because this is where we're headquartered, right? All of us. Um, so just a quick thing you know about the university. If you're an alum, you understand the bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. And we all know what a university is. So that we have uh, eight colleges in our university, part of a 23 campus system across the state of California. Our particular college is really built to serve folks that don't fit in the 18 to 24, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday model. Uh, so we serve all sorts of learners professional development degree completers, English language learners, and we do a lot of um, customized and tailored training with a lot of departments and agencies. Christine is the director of our Extension Programs Unit, which primarily focuses on certificate programs for non-credit and customized training, and she um, is going to talk a little bit about some of the talent management innovations around onboarding and employee engagement that um, you embarked on many years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll provide a little bit of context as well, and it's interesting because I think our organization was a little bit of transition when we started this project as well. So we were several managers um, arranged by topic areas, not considered one unit, and at this time in the organization, we uh, had a director that came over all these separate managers, and for the first time, even though we had similar functions and were providing similar services, we had to act as one cohesive unit. And so when the director came on board, this was one of, we had a kind of a presentation and discussion of who we are and where we're going. And this is one of the slides that was presented as far as wanting to be really the employer of choice and even the unit of choice, which for people that are competitive, that sounds great. For people like myself that are not competitive, I was like, ooh, that's a little bit scary. You want to be better than everyone else here in the organization. But really, it was about who are we going to be as a team. And it was setting up the precedent of saying, you know, we want our team to be very, you know, productive and engaged, but also to be happy. And the word fun came out. You know, we want our team to be a fun team. And what does that look like? How do we continue to innovate what we're doing as far as program delivery? How can we also be consistent? Because we've kind of grown up in these silos under managers and we're doing things different ways. And so it's where is this organization or this unit going forward? So as I kind of also provide some context, I just want to let you know two things. One, we are bargaining unit employees, so you know it's just like the state, um, keep that in mind. And then two, we piloted all this within a unit. So this was not organization-wide. We did not necessarily have support organization-wide. Instead, it was a decision that we could do these things within the unit um, and really make a difference. And so it's kind of the context of where we were going when this started. So. So what we really focused on is through a process, we all came together as a group and we did some activities, the appreciative inquiry process, and I don't know if people have heard of that, but we did some of that exercises about what do we like most about our job, when are we happiest here, you know, what is the direction that we're going in, who are we, um, and what are the priorities of our unit. And so we, we came up with kind of our, our rallying cry, it was called, or our mantra, is that we make a difference. We really felt like we make the difference in the life of others, you know, in the students that we serve, and the employers and companies that we work with, and our government partners. And so that's who we were. But what were the priorities of the unit? And what really came out loud and clear amongst all of the team members was training. We need training and we need standard operating procedures. And we feel like, you know, we came up with the slogan, how to equals can do. If we know how to do it, we will do it. We all are very engaged and want to be here. So as part of that training process and really looking at what that meant for our unit, and especially as we are entering a growth phase where we are doing a lot of hiring, we came up with an employee integration program. So we called it New Employee Integration Program. And unlike your new employee orientation program, this had two components. It had two major goals. One was to make sure that people were getting the training and the skills they needed to be successful and making sure that we had enough of our processes documented so that they knew what success looks like, what a good job looks like. But then the other component of it was more of that so social integration. So we were doing both. We had activities that were training focused and we had the activities that were more social integration focused. So what that specifically looked like is we wanted, one of the things that we noticed 
is it was not realistic that a supervisor or manager could necessarily train a new coordinator on all of the roles of their job because the manager didn't do all those roles. And we didn't want to put that burden on a manager who may not be teaching them the right way to do it. So we really looked at how can you take training and spread it across the whole unit as far as having roles and responsibilities to make sure that the whole team was successful. And so what we did, we came up with four categories and we came up with checklists and roles and responsibilities for the four categories. We had the supervisor or manager who had a role in that training. We had what would you call subject matter experts who we knew were the experts in how to use, let's say, our databases and who could provide very specific functional training. We had the buddy, which was a little bit different. Um, the buddy was their go-to resource person. So the idea is if you're you know, coming into an organization and you're doing your job and all of a sudden you need to know how to find something or how to do something or someone's telling you to do this or the other, you might not go to su your subject matter expert, you might not go to your supervisor, instead you're going to your buddy. And your buddy is your person that's gonna help you guide through where are the resources in our organization, where do you find what you need to be successful. And so it was a really key role to that uh, makeup. And then of course the fourth role being the actual employee and what they were doing. So each of those roles had checklists that they would follow, kind of the you know, first week, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and they checked in. And we you know, did a lot of evaluation of the process along the way to make sure it worked. But we also um, incorporated fun, and I think I heard fun from yours as well. So when we kicked this program off, we actually had a two to three hour workshop, and we had the super buddy come, and, and we really like to use the strengths of the people in our team, so we had someone that was really into you know, acting and, and, and videography. So we had someone come in dressed up with a cape and the super buddy. He had created lyrics around the super buddy and what it was and what it would do in our unit. Um, and he came and sang a song and, you know, kind of walked around the room and we, we had the super buddy give a presentation. He also did a nice little video of a new employee going around and asking different people how to do something, asking the same thing and getting four different answers on how to do it, which you guys probably all know is, is happens a lot in your organizations. And so it was just a way to kind of have fun with it, but to really turn it into an opportunity to create a lot of buy-in and support for the model. So while we were in the growth phase, that was a, a major um, part of how we would onboard new employees and help them really acclimate to our, our unit. We also would do coffees with teams and other kind of social activities to make sure that that piece was, was happening as well. So then when we look kind of longer term at some of the things that we've done, I, how many of you do these kind of personality communication assessments within your organizations? A little bit, right? So we all do some of those. So we also did those things. So we did do Myers-Briggs and then more recently in past years, um, StrengthsFinder. But we really tried to make it a, to take it a step further. So, you know, the existing team did the assessment and had some workshops around it. But then every new person coming in would take the assessment. And roughly once or twice a year, we would all get to back together with a facilitator and really look at, you know, what does this mean when we're interacting with each other? How is our communication based on our types? And we all have these little, you know, types that tell everybody who we are. So you walk up to our office of Krug, you know who I am. And, and that's actually still hanging to this day, you know, several years later. So it's just one more way that we kept some of those activities going. And this particular one was adopted by the rest of the organization. So now it is something that happens organization wide when people come in. And so it's, it's one example of some of the things that we did that, that were later adopted by the larger organization. And we found over time, I think one of our lessons learned from all of this was that um, I think when we created this and many other activities around how we in engaged our employees, we kind of felt like once we built it, we were so worried about consistency and, and keeping it going that we felt like success was only measured as long as we kept these activities going. And we kind of had a realization that, you know, we kind of went with a downturn with the rest of the state economy where we weren't hiring. And it wasn't a bad thing that not all of these activities always continued through every cycle in your organization. But what we're finding is by having done it before, we're able to pick up these tools and bring them back and work on pieces of it as our business cycles and our team cycle and kind of our organization cycles. And so it's been a kind of a, a fluid way to take some, some things that we did many years ago and continue to practice them in our organization. Uh, thank you, Christine. So Christine mentioned in the Buddy program um, some tools and checklists. And I have a couple of those copies or if people want to see that, we're totally 
ready, willing, you know, to share these things. But there literally was a program detail that explained the objective of the program. We went through um, the right steps to build the checklist. Uh, 90 days was really the focus point that I think Christine um, talked about. And that really gave everybody clarity of roles and checklists and also just helped um, as a supervisor or manager or buddy, just a reminder, oh yeah, I have a responsibility to my colleagues and coworkers to make them uh, the kind of colleagues and coworkers I wanna keep working with. Okay, um, so some of the other things um, in terms of rewards and recognitions, I brought a couple samples, um, and I probably have about 20 copies of this one, uh, which is actually up on CalHR site. So this is, um, to me, a really cool matrix model um, because it addresses recognition strategies for supervisors, and this is always a challenge, and uh, recognition and rewards are oftentimes everybody's favorite thing about an organization and the thing they hate the most, right? They love it when they're the ones getting rewarded or up for an award, and they hate it when they're not recognized. So um, that's just tried and true across all rewards and recognition programs, but I think the tool that CalHR built, uh, to me, is really helpful as a supervisor because as you look down the dark blue line on the left and you look at the audiences and you see that there can be peer-to-peer -peer recognition. So what does that look like as you move across in day-to-day -day life or on a weekly basis or monthly basis or on special occasions? What does it look like for supervisor to employer or supervisor to a whole team? So when, when can you do something to an individual? When do you recognize the whole team and what can that look like on just a spontaneous day-to-day -day basis or going across to special occasions? And then also recognizing employees to upper management, bringing attention and shedding the spotlight on your team, on individuals as you highlight their successes and accomplishments. So again, that's on the website or we have some copies and I think it's, um, I've studied recognition programs for many years and I think this is a really nice summary and a one, I love a one pager, uh, God love them, bullet points and one pagers really can get you through a lot of things. Um, I'm gonna share with you one of the recognition things that we actually did in Christine's unit um, because this is really the, uh, the fun part of recognizing uh, whole teams. Uh, so it, the, the central folks in our organization, so our finance people, our marketing people, our enrollment people, the folks that rarely get to, to deal with students one-on-one -on -one and never really feel the love or get to see the difference that they make in the life of students, they just usually serve the internal program people. So um, in the unit, we decided we wanted to show appreciation to the other 45 people in the organization that made it possible for us to do our work. And to, hey, why not make it an 80s day? So we picked a day and we made it an 80s day and we went in costume. We choreographed an appreciation dance to You Got the Right Stuff. We um, made appreciation cards for every employee uh, in the unit that had been serving us. We had a big reception. They walked down an aisle way. We read out all their, their crazy stuff. Um, and we really had a good time about it. Now, people thought we were crazy, and I think that we were, but it, it was our opportunity to not only show appreciation, but it was also part of our stepping outside of our zone in our unit and saying, it's okay to have fun at work. It's okay when you're enjoying your job and to have fun with it. And it's okay to recognize people and it's okay to be friendly. And um, as long as you do it right and do it within the boundaries and the rules, it can be a good time. So this was um, one of the, the things that we did. There's a video out there somewhere, but we don't have the link and so we won't, we won't share that. Um, okay, so thank you to the panelists. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do um, towards the end of this was really remind that sharing is caring. And I'm thinking there's probably some innovative things maybe going on in your departments or agencies. So this is when that microphone in the middle really comes in handy. Um, does somebody have something that they wanna share that they've seen, that they've heard of, that you could share with other folks in the room? And everybody's eyes drop down. <laughs> Come on, I know there's some cool entities out here. Really? That's why we're here to Nobody's got nothing? <laughs> Ask questions? You, okay, well, yeah, you got questions? Okay. Can you go to the microphone? Because they'll yell at me because it won't record if you don't go to the microphone. <laughs> I was just wondering, so you were talking about the Myers-Briggs and the INT. <laughs> Thank you. The INT generally stands for introverts. So 
how are you balancing your folks who are a little less mm -hmm. want to dance and want to uh, <laughs> right. engage? Yeah. Okay, that Christine, way. would you yeah. like to take you know, that? Platinum Being that that's, that was my eye, uh, <laughs> I did not dance on that particular event. You know, I think that is something we really, going back to, we try to focus on people's strengths. And so we create an opportunity to, to let people do like extra projects or things that fit their their strength or personality that particular event it was employee driven the con i mean the concept of doing it came from leadership but how it was done was completely left to the employees and so i think uh, and even in some of the other examples it's that balance between having a structure but letting employees do what they want to do um, so and then also in hiring obviously we we have looked for that in hiring we really do believe in, in balancing each other's strengths um, my management team of, of six or seven or so we're very clear which of us bring certain strengths to the table and we balance each other well. So it's kind of a, a, a effort and, and a planned effort to make sure that, that happens. So I, I will add on to that. One of the things with everybody coming in, there was a big poster put up that, that put you into the grid of where the Myers-Briggs match and you could constantly see sort of who completes you. <laughs> and so um, as an extrovert, I love me a good introvert because I won't get anything done without introvert grounding me. <laughs> and making sure things happen. And these conversations really helped us um, see the value of that, not only just as individuals, but how these different characteristics or types or however you mm -hmm. want to classify, it gave us a place to have an objective conversation about the assets of each and how they can really successfully build an organization. So the person that wanted to come up with the quotes and find them and organize them and type them up and make the cards, you know, that's what the introvert would have done, right? The assessment came after you'd already hired yeah, so we're not using assessment as part of our hiring officially, but you can kind of get a sense of, of people and where they might fit. I, I, so as the introvert, I joke that if I ever go to a social event, I grab at least one extrovert with me before I go, and we're good. <laughs> this is for the utilities. Um, on your onboarding process, two questions. Is how big is your department? How big is your department? And then for your onboarding, do you guys actually have one-on-one -on -one with your people or do you have an online system on your intranet or trainings where they actually go to a training? So we're 1100 and growing and our onboarding program is being rolled out in phases. So we just launched our new employee orientation phase which takes that stack of forms that you fill out on your first day and we actually created an online tutorial and compiled all the frequently asked questions and put them as question bubbles on the form. So you can actually get the Q&A, what's the purpose of the form, why is it used, what parts do I need to fill out, they're all highlighted. Um, and it's got an introductory video from um, staff in that unit. So that's given to the employee in advance. And then on their first day, we actually broke up what used to be a one hour intense session going through all those forms into two 30 minute sessions. So we broke them up on the mandatory essential forms they need done on their first day. Those are gone over the first 30 minutes and then they're able to ask all the questions on the benefit side, you know, your health, dental, vision and your optional benefits for the second 30 minute session. So they're able to do their research. We space them over a week apart. And then we are also, the next phase that we're rolling out next month, well, March, that's tomorrow, is um, a coaching program. So we're actually creating coaches, a coaching team. So every new employee will be assigned a coach and it can be a person of any level in the organization. And the idea there is to create the culture that we want, acclimate them to our environment, and then we've added a core values as part of our onboarding program. So then within their first six months, they'll have a coach assigned to them and they will each month go through a two hour um, onboarding training. That is our curriculum that we developed that repeats every six months. So every month throughout the year, there's um, one class for the new staff to go to. Did you have a follow up? Yes, the two 30-minute sessions are face-to-face. -face. So we group them by bargaining unit. So if we get, you know, five people in one unit, we'll group them together and do the 30-minute sessions with them. Um, but we do have 
um, somebody in our LA office that takes care of LA staff. Um, we just hired someone in Sacramento who's in the audience and um, in San Francisco. So we do have one person in each location that coordinates those. But it is a lot of work and prior to the online piece, it was it was pretty rough. That was pretty much all that they were able to do. And they um, created this kind of online tutorial system that is significantly reducing the amount of time, the questions, and getting new employees to feel more comfortable and not so overwhelmed. I mean, 15, 20 minutes in, their eyes were glazed over. So this is really helping. So let me ask a question that might be on people's minds out here. This sounds like a lot of work. and maybe takes a lot of staff, and depending on the size of your department, how do you pull that off? How do you sell this up? How do you uh, sell this to maybe skeptical leaders that investing in people or spending time on this is an important investment? Well, I, f I think we were a little bit fortunate. So part of our rebuilding efforts um, in our organization, we created an internal audit unit, and they're independent from the operations of the commission. And they came to us, and one of their first audits that they wanted to do was, do we have a workforce and succession plan? And I looked at them and said, look, you don't need to do an audit. No, we don't have one. We know we don't have one. Um, and yeah, oh, we, we have to do one anyway. So the findings of that audit were, of course, that we didn't have one, but it actually recommended that we have a high-level executive that created a strategic focus for managing our biggest asset, right, our people. So we got the results of that, and um, the HR director at the time said, well, wait a minute. Rather than having someone else come in and tell us what we already know we need to do, why don't we look at reorganizing our office in a way that um, created that split, the talent management and HR? And at the time, I was the assistant HR director, and my passion has always been in training and looking at more of the strategic side. So it kind of seemed like a perfect fit. I was lucky enough to get a BCP approved. Um, I got two permanent positions and money for four two-year limited term positions. So we're uh, six months in, and we've been able to do this much already. So my hope is to get those resources permanently but I'm happy to share um, BCP information with anyone who wants to pursue that. That is a model that other agencies have been successful in. I kind of got the idea from SCIF and found out a lot of their structure and we're not as advanced as them. They actually have an entire IT team dedicated to HR, but that was a great model to get us started in thinking about the resources that we need to pull something like this off and then to see cal hr has done something similar in creating more of a talent unit so i do think that that is very hopeful for you guys but you can look at the resources you have and how you can restructure them to have more of a strategic focused unit and then more of an operationally focused unit christine do you want to add anything um, uh, well, so we were doing it more at the unit level, but I think, I think the two things are, one, you know, as long as you're successful, whatever that's defined in your organization, and you can show that what you're doing is helping you be successful, and also we had really low turnover. In fact, we have a lot of employees. You know, we joke that we drank the Kool-Aid. I've been in that unit for 18 years. So I think, you know, the combination of showing that it's been successful for us, that our employees do feel very engaged, um, that we are meeting, you know, success measurements as defined by our organization, it certainly helps the case and it allows us to kind of keep doing what we want to do. Cool. So we are at that magical four o'clock hour. We have a couple, as I said, some handouts if you want them of the recognition. Um, we also have, for, for those of you that haven't seen the workforce planning model, I've got some handouts on that if you want them. But I really encourage you to go to CalHR's website. Like you can spend days just diving into the stuff. Um, they have amazing resources and tools and I have to think it's only gonna grow as more and more entities um, are willing to put their samples and tools up there. And by no means should we be trying to reinvent the wheel when we see something cool out there let's take it edit it and get it out there um, thank you so much and thank you to our panelists